Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CastelloWellness.com, and I was asked a question, and it comes up in the office, so we'll go ahead and do a video on what is a hernia, okay? So we're going to start with drawing the abdomen, and I like to draw it like that, with your belly button in the middle, your chest up on top, legs down there, and this is your right side, and your left side looking at you. So uh, when we think about a hernia, most people think about turn your head and cough. That's what's called an inguinal hernia or a groin hernia. So think about your abdominal wall like a woven hot air balloon basket. The muscles are weaves of the basket. So a bodybuilder who has six pack abs, you can actually see the weaves of his basket because he's very lean. So a hernia is basically when somebody or too many people are in side of the basket and they put their foot through the bottom of the weave of the basket. So inguinal or groin hernias are down here and that's generally boys that get those because before you're born your testicles are actually in your abdomen like ovaries are and if you've ever heard of a boy with undescended testicles that means that they never came through into the scrotum. So every boy his testicles start here he makes two holes in the bottom of his basket for the testicles to go into the scrotum. So when we do turn your head and cough, I'm finding the cord and I'm going up and I'm basically putting my finger in where that little hole came through and seeing if there's a hernia or a bulge when you do a cough. So that's a inguinal or groin hernia that's very common in boys and men, okay? The next type of hernia that we can get is called an umbilical hernia or belly button hernia, and your belly button had your umbilical cord going through it before you were born, so that's another hole that was put in your basket, so that can be a potential hole. Some babies are born and they have a little bulge in their belly button, that's an umbilical hernia, and usually by a year of age that thing closes up and it doesn't become a hernia anymore, and then later in life that thing starts to stretch out and you get fluid and then you can actually get part of your intestines poking through that umbilical hernia that usually happens in overweight people because they're pushing from the inside out. So those are the most common hernias. Um, we'll see something called a ventral hernia and that's something that looks like that. So when you start to sit up you can actually see like a raised ridge uh, or fullness in your abdomen and that's because you have one of these big weaves up and down the middle like that six pack ab that weave is actually basically saran wrap tissue there's no muscle up and down the middle so when that saran wrap gets stretched out that's a ventral hernia okay don't exercise or try and do squat do uh, crunches to get your muscles stronger because there's no muscle there every time you crunch, you're actually stretching out that uh, saran wrap fascia tissue is what it's called. So you can't fix a ventral hernia by exercising. If you do go to the gym, you should wear some type of a, like a neoprene brace to keep that from stretching out further. If it gets really uncomfortable or really big, uh, the surgeon can put a piece of mesh, which is like window screen on the inside and strengthen that up. So that's called a ventral hernia. Okay. The last one, two more that I want to talk about, there's called a femoral hernia and that's kind of like an inguinal hernia but it's usually a little bit farther off to the side in the crease uh, of the inguinal fold and that's where the arteries and veins come out of the abdomen and down into the leg. They put holes in the bottom of the woven basket is all. I can't tell you the last time I saw a femoral hernia, so it's very uncommon. Um, those are usually diagnosed by the general surgeon, all right? Last hernia is called an incisional hernia. So if you had surgery uh, anywhere on your body, they cut through that muscle tissue. They sew it back up when they're done, but that muscle tissue isn't necessarily as strong as the rest of your muscle was before it was cut. So over time that can stretch out and you can get an incisional hernia as a down the road complication of having had surgery. All right. The reason why these become important other than pain and because they don't look good is you can have what's called an incarcerated or a strangulated hernia and that is a surgical emergency. So imagine you're in this hot air balloon basket and you accidentally put your foot through the weave of the basket. 
you want to pull your foot back inside the basket and if you don't that basket gets tight and it incarcerates or it, it strangulates the tissue that goes through that so if you sneeze or you lift and your intestines actually push through the hernia if they don't go back inside they can lose their blood circulation and within even hours or a day the tissue starts to die you get an infection that's very very bad so anytime i see somebody with a hernia i always warn them until they go see the surgeon if they get severe pain or vomiting or fever or worsening that they can't push back in place they need to go to the emergency room even if it's two o'clock in the morning so different types of hernias different people they're all related to this hot air balloon basket or weaves of the muscle theory dr castello thank you